If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this super awesome episode of Mind The Pump, most awesome. Fire. Justin, Adam, and me have some fun conversation. We start off our intro, it's about 33 minutes long, by talking about the man with an 18-inch penis. Oh, that poor bastard. There's actually a guy with a penis that big who's actually a getting foot and a half. disability as a result. This is a true story. Just weighing him down. We talked about our Discovery Bay retreat. Well, we created some new programs. That's right, plural, programs. What, what did you say? Exciting stuff. We talked about the similarity between nutrition, religion, and politics. We talked about Justin's new dog that he's going to be getting. Yeah. We talked about Adam's horny dogs. <laughs> He's got a lot. He says they're not gay, but I think they are. <laughs> and then we talk about Organifi holiday treats, recipes with Organifi products. Now, we are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, uh, you will get a discount. Oh, and enter the code MINDPUMP, no space. You'll get a massive discount. Also, before I get into the questions that we answer, I want to let you guys all know the Fit Expo is coming up. And on January 6th and 7th, uh, Adam and myself will be speaking uh, about intuitive eating, we will be in the Healthy Living Pavilion, and we'll be speaking at 12.30 p.m. Yeah, L.A. Fit Expo. L.A. Six, Fit Expo. January 6th and 7th. That's it. Go check it First out. question that we answer, let's say somebody lacks uh, proper levels of serotonin, and uh, they think that some of their fatigue and depression, depression comes from that. How would we go about upping those levels naturally? How can you get your serotonin levels to increase in your body without having to take... Uh, pharmaceutical drugs. The next question was, this particular individual has hip pain due to a weak core. What would be a good basic at-home core routine that this person could do daily to help them with this pain? The next question was, are behind-the-neck presses good or bad? This is an old-school, believe it or not, old-school shoulder exercise that you don't see too often in gyms anymore. Is it because it hurts people or is it because people are pussies now? Yeah. And the final the question, this person wants to know what we think about per specific conspiracy theories, or at least what are some conspiracy theories that we believe in? Find out why Justin thinks the earth is flat yeah. in this episode. We've all been deceived. <laughs> also, we got like a couple days left. Two days. To enroll in one of our programs and then Phew. get half off the forum and then be in there for life. So let me break it down for you. Uh, January's coming up, the new year. Your best bet is enroll in our MAPS Super Bundle. This will cover you for the entire year. So you'll have all your workouts, all of them, planned out for you for all of 2018. When you enroll in the Super Bundle or in any of our other programs, you will get an offer for access to our forum for half off. Now, once you pay for that, you're in there for life. You never have to enroll again. If you wait till January... There will be an annual fee. Our form will no longer have a one-time fee for life type enrollment plan. You'll have to pay every single year. So you're this is it right here. This is the time. Enroll in one of our programs. Get in the forum. You're in there for life. Never have to pay an annual fee. To find out more about our MAPS Super Bundle and about our forum, just go to mindpumpmedia.com. You got a little kinkle going on there. Adam. Oh, Look dude. You know what sucks, though? Sexy. You know what sucks about that? It's, that it's not even swelling my calves up? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to squeeze it up. Actually, it somehow. is. Actually, my calf yeah. is actually really swollen. I'm like, oh, shit. It looks normal. <laughs> yeah, you're, dude. You're, okay, it's like so a beer it, far it went from really small to just small. So, Bro, right? you're, so you with a busted uh, Achilles, totally inflamed ankle, swollen, you know, five times bigger than it normally is, ankle still smaller than Justin's kinkles. Yeah. You know, Even though his, he's got some thunderous kinks. He's got no fluid in his. <laughs> They're big. Yeah. Yeah. Were you ever obese? Rhinoceros. You ever watch a, per like a, a really obese person when they lose weight? They still have the big bones. <laughs> yeah. no, you know no, I was. Yeah, I know exactly. You've never been obese, about. though. No. no, no. If anything, that would make more sense. You were the skinny kid at one, for one point. I was. Yeah, you could yeah, put on size time. and mass, right? Me no. and my brother both. And then I. Uh, I have, after high school, I finally like yeah, I put some meat on my bones. I have big wrists, but not big ankles. Dude, I have my wrists super are super small wrists. Do you really? Like, Let me yeah. see your wrist, Justin. Let's see who's got. I don't know, dude. He's got clobbers. Dude, look at big old clobbers. Well, no, we got to. We I want to. <laughs> let's let's measure our wrists and see who's got a bigger wrist. 
I think I want to turn it into. I think I think Justin. I'm looking at both of you. Justin has the biggest. Then you're the next, and then I'm small. For just wrist? Just yeah, like, just wrist. Oh. We're just looking at wrist only. Really? Yeah. Huh. We Obviously, get, it wouldn't go in that I order. I want to take my penises. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, not that order. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> speaking of, it's speak, a direct reflection. Speaking yeah. of penises, <laughs> yeah. did you guys see that 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 article I shared on my Insta story? Like, was it last week? The dude with the was it 18 inch penis? What? He he qualifies for disability. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. That's not yes. Real. J- Doug, see if you can pull it up. It was 18 inches? 18 I'm inches. more impressed that you qualify for disability. That's amazing. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Congratulations. So, you've won it live. There's somewhere yeah. in the form that says, like, if you have a penis larger than 15 <laughs> inches, you can. This is really going to restrict you. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. you're going to have a hard time. Which I, I, yeah, I could argue yeah. that. I could I see mean, that. I think he, he petitioned, like, he petitioned them, and he's like, I'd look, be I can't. tripping on that thing. So let's talk about the, the man with one and a half foot long member claims work is hard to come by. Does he just tape it to one leg or what? I have I have no idea. I really want to see it. You know I kind of do. I, I want to see a, like, foot, a foot and a half. Like I'm I want to see it, yeah, bro. Yeah. You know what else is a foot and a half? What? Like, like a four year old. Yeah. Like that's as big as a kid. Wow. No, dude, a foot Why? and a half no. is that, bro. Don't be comparing those. That's two a things lot. Maybe together in the same. There, even there is crazy. You know, what you could do with the dick that big. What you, you could, could definitely, you could I mean, definitely, you would know. You would know. You could, you could. What you say, Adam? You could definitely suck it. Your own? Yes. You give your own. I'm only, I'm only like three inches away. Oh, your own. Yeah, I'm you're only, right. I'm only like three inches away. You give me another foot. I mean, you, don't even have some to, dick. you don't even have to learn yoga. Yeah, no, I'm you know what I mean? Like, no. it's ready to go. No. You know what's yeah. funny? I'm not even, yeah, I'm not you know even what's flexible. Funny? Yeah. I would bet, I would bet all my life savings on the fact that he has done that. Of course you have. <laughs> every, every man has tried yes. it at one point. Just Why to see. Why wouldn't he? Just to see. Every guy has tried but that. But the thing yes. is, is just that it. he can. So you can't even like, I mean, if you yeah. can. Yeah, right. He's got an extra, if I had you an extra would. foot, bro, for sure. Oh, what if he gets caught up and finishes? Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, but that's the thing. That, that's that's the line crosser. That's when you're yeah. then, then all of a sudden like, what have I done? It's like cool. <laughs> but that's and then, uh, oh no. That's definitely something everybody's tried at least once. But no, what I was gonna sure. say is he could take his own dick and fucking hit someone with it like a bat, oh, yeah. like a little mini bat. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know those bats you get at like the... Uh, oh, wow, look at that. Like, like There's a actually, picture of it. <laughs> it's all blurred. Oh, you, 54 oh, years old, claims knocked down where... No, oh. You know what's gross about that picture, Doug? I'll blur it. So they blur it out. He's obviously holding it. looks like a fucking... Like a loaf ho- of bread. <laughs> like a hog. <laughs> it looks like a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, that, like that is a thick, <laughs> the gro- thunderous... The gross thing about that picture is that it's an older man. Obviously, he's got his dick out, so he's got no pants on. He has a full sleeve, like a, like a full sleeve shirt on and a hat. Yeah. At least go, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Just go naked. I mean, it's a weird yeah. look. Why you got to wear it? And he's got a weird look on his face. Yeah. You know what that look I still, is? I still, I don't it's understand. Like he's just like working that's outside. The look of, that's the look of dominance. Uh, so the only- like, here it is. Let's talk about the positives and the negatives of having a, um, an 18-inch dick. Are mm-hmm. there any, well, there, okay, there are some positives. Yeah. There are positive. Positive, number one. I don't care what group of men you're around. You have the biggest dick. Well, it's always. It, yeah. Instantly. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And you know it. And, and there gives you, there's a different swag you have when you know that. Well, <laughs> of course. Well, think about this. You're talking with a group of guys. Everybody's talking yeah. shit. One guy's like, I make, I got a Ferrari. This other guy's like, oh. yeah. Yeah. All you got to yeah. do is. Pull- I got the Nobel Peace Prize, yeah. dude. Yeah. I got the biggest dick. You just pull it out. <laughs> you know, like you yeah. win still. Yeah. Right. You, you beat that guy. You pull it out, put it on the floor. Yeah. Take a look at that. <laughs> Instant dominance. <laughs> yeah. That's number one. That's a good thing. Number two. I solved cancer. You know, like, uh, I got a big dick. I can't, think, I can't think of any other positives, though. Yeah, there's not a, there isn't a lot. Because if, let's be honest, most women would be very turned off by that. Like, it's too much. I don't know if they'd be uh, turned off. And I know there's a couple, they would, they would, like, I know there's a couple sluts that are listening right now yeah. going, oh, not me, baby. Uh, <laughs> so, but for the most part, most women would be like, a foot yeah. and a half dick is too much dick. It's a, it's they would want to see it. They'd like, look from afar. You know what I mean? Like we wouldn't get all dude. Close. I just it's, realized it is scary. I just realized something. He only ever puts the tip in. Oh, yeah. You know that old trick you played when you were, you know, when yeah, you first yeah, start dating. Like, like, oh, let me put the how tip. Frustrate- That's all he ever does. How frustrating yeah. you if you're that guy too. Well, yeah, you, you can't ever go all in. The other question I have is, can he get a can he get a, an erection like, like a full erection? Right, it'd be too much, like too way. much weight. Well, I don't it's know. Probably, I could, let's probably like no. I think it's probably like two quarter. Like you know, there's no way. You said too much weight, but then it lifts itself. What I was saying is. The lo- the blood loss, right. like, would you get dizzy? Yeah. Think of the, the drop you in blood pressure. You definitely get fatigued. 
know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> to like, fill it up quicker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's gonna be at you least prioritize four, four quarts flow. of blood right there. <laughs> where, where's the blood gonna come from? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I you're mean, gonna I'm lose sure, feeling in one arm. I'm sure you're prone to more heart attack for sure. I'm yeah. Sure. Anyway, where did you yeah. come? Where do you? What are articles are you reading to come across stuff like this? I was trying to see how normal I am, yeah. and uh, it said apparently I'm. I'm uh, no, I'm just kidding. I, I, somebody <laughs> sent it to me, which is even weirder. Yeah. Somebody DM me. This That's article, a sign right there. Yeah. yeah, somebody DM'd me this article, so I shared it on my Insta story, and it's uh, true. Look at that. There's an X-ray. What is that? A CT scan of his yeah. of his of his junk. Whoa. That's uh, that's a lot of yeah, it's a lot of a lot recruitment there. Anyway, anyway, I had a, I had a good time with you guys at uh, Discovery Bay. Yeah, yeah, man. I like that. That's a nice area. What is that area anyway? It's uh, it's the probably the nicest homes they have built in the Delta, hmm. and the Delta is kind of like wah, wah, right. It's not like the nicest like. Piece of yeah, water. How far does it go? It goes all the way to. It goes to the ocean. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It taps into the ocean. So there are t- ocean taps in that, however you want to look at it. Uh, so it's it's literally like a big canal. Uh-huh. It's like all these canals. Canal? And, yeah, canal. 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 Yeah, you're saying it like Chanel Canelo. with a K, but it's, so it's not canal, it's canal. Canal. Anyway, continue. Did I say I said canal? Canal. Yeah, say canal? Know. You said canal. No. Get, the, uh, get out of here. I don't remember at this point. Get out of here, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy. I think now he just looks for him. He's yeah, like, yeah. He's like, here's a 50 Watch 50 out, shot. Like putting he's going to make mouth. up a word right here, uh, and he's like trying to be the first one to catch it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, would you, yeah. would you say that? Say that one more Canelo. time. Canelo. Say it one more time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's not like really sexy, but Discovery Bay they've built all these beautiful, uh, you know, multi million dollar homes, monster homes. Yeah, on the water, and uh, it's a little area that's really nice. My buddy just bought a house over there. It's a really cool place, and you know, it's got a boat dock right there, so you could just pull your boat right up there, cruise all over the place. So mm. it's it's a nice area where we were at. I mean, the rest of the Delta is kind of like, ah, it's all right. You know? I just have fun, man, because we get together and then with the goal of creating new things. And uh, yeah, it's a great it state of flow. All of that. Yeah. It's a great state of flow. It's my f- probably my favorite thing that we do. It's always say, fun. It's definitely. always fun for me to see uh, because we've now done so, so many different homes right where we go to. Is like which one creates the most? You know, like where 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 did we get like the most creative or the most productive? Oh uh, yeah, I'd have to say you know this. The last trip was pretty fucking was, productive. Dude, kind we put of together, on fire. We put together some new I stuff. Mean, I thought Reno was the magical one, right? Forever. I agree. And then this one actually, I don't know. It came no, in hot. When you think about not only what we created, but then also just this the little little things that we got to touch on with the business. I never realized how important this was. I remember when I got back, I told Katrina, I said, you know, we're going to have to make this a regular monthly thing. And the reason why is because, you know, we didn't have to record anything that day. We didn't have to record any podcasts. We didn't have to do any YouTube. So it truly gave us an entire- And we're four- out of the studio. Yeah, we're out mm-hmm. of the studio. So 48 hours of not thinking about the day-to-day stuff and like really evaluating our business and saying, okay- What's going well? What are we doing really good? What are we? What do we see that we're we're fault we're failing on? Where can we be better? And just the whole conversation nonstop was about all these things that I felt like we needed to address. And and I know we have our minutes meeting and stuff like that. And that seems like we we talk, but that's like seems to me more like it's future stuff, like we want where we want to be or taking care of like pressing issues that we need to sign something or whatever. Mm-hmm. But this allows us to be in a creative environment where we can be very creative about the business and then also can start to address it helps you look at it differently too right so it's like you see the same things like constantly in the same environment but yeah this always helps you to kind of look a little bit higher from a different angle and then it starts to kind of help fill a lot of those holes oh you just we, you oh, just man. wait you just wait listeners we got some new stuff yeah. coming for you yeah. Yeah. you just wait just we were on his, fire. his tagline we're gonna fill them holes we're gonna fill and them it, holes he definitely was the one who came up with that one oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah Jeez, oh, we were yeah. going back and we we're trying to figure out who oh, came up yeah. with each one i was like you know what? That is definitely That's Justin. Definitely he Justin. just used that line. <laughs> dude, I haven't heard that before. Did you guys? So you guys, you guys saw that that Instagram post I did, right? Where I talked about this is when, right when they when they passed the new tax cut. I don't. I, I think I blocked you last week. So since then, I haven't seen you any haven't of your seen posts. me. Yeah. So I did a post on the tax cuts that they had passed, which were massive. It's one of the biggest tax cuts in. Uh, oh yeah, I in saw decades. This. 230 comments Woo! underneath it. Wow. Just, I have, I didn't know people would get angry over yeah. getting more of their own money. It's, it's the weirdest it's fucking thing. You know what? Very I, bizarre. I read it's so phenomenon. weird. I go on both of you guys' pages and I, and I read like the comments when I have, this is not all the time. Like when I get a chance, I do this. And there seems to be like a type of person that comments on each of our pages that's different than the others. There's all, there's like, we have like some people that talk to all of us all the time, but there's obviously certain people that, 
gravitate towards each of our pages, right? Yeah. And Sal definitely gets. Uh, He's got a large, and I'm going to insult all your followers right now. They're going to yell notes. <laughs> I just hope I'm going to lose like some. All the Salvians. So, no, that they, I feel like because they know he, he's like the, he's the one who remembers all these studies. He's the super intellect over here. They love to like, they kind of, it's like they want to, they want to, uh, when you, being a big guy, when you walk in a bar, you see everybody fucking size you up. It's like everyone's kind of sizing him up. Yeah. That's what I yeah. feel like your page is. He's got his own like pecking order. Sal will say yeah. something on there, fucking putting the bait out there. And here come, here come all the other intellects or, well, wa- I read or something that said wannabe this. intellects yeah. <laughs> to yeah. put their two cents in. And it's really yeah. like, let me see if I can <laughs> handle this. <laughs> the worst is like the person that'll read something, like some clickbait like article or something be like oh t- i totally know about this subject kaboom i'm writing something <laughs> yeah, you're, you're wrong big mistake no, right wrong. right no i couldn't believe how many people were it's so crazy how shit gets spun so much like the media will spin things to the point where people are actually mad that there's tax cuts how weird is that you're right. gonna get more of your own money remember when i was i was it's tell- so fucking crazy i was having a conversation it with one of my weird. best friends and like he was upset about it before or it was yeah, pes- he's, he, he was pessimistic about it. He's like, I'm going to end up paying more. I know it's for the rich. Let me put it. Let me put it. Let me put it in the calculator. Real it's not going to work out the way that it says on paper. <laughs> and he, ended, he ended up with like a seven hundred dollars savings. Like yeah, he ended up with a savings. Yeah, something like <laughs> which is hilarious. Something like eighty percent of the tax uh, savings or whatever go to middle class uh, people. Most people are going to say are going to make money. Not to mention, big business save. You know, when they pay less of their the taxes to the government, they spend their money how they see fit. And they typically spend it better than bureaucrats do. Yeah. It's just the way it is. But I, I, people were so... It's so funny how people get angry over that. Wow. How do you get angry over that? Well, you, I thought for sure... You know what? When people get angry about things like that, especially when you're talking about like economics, it's like the same yeah. thing when people get angry with nutrition. It's, ir- it's irrational. To me, that's your first flag. You have an issue. Like If you get angry over it, like if you get angry over something like that, like that, if it triggered you, like, hello, yeah. you got an issue here. Yeah. Like what, yeah. Whether you like it or not, it is, or else it wouldn't trigger you. Otherwise, you could just have an intelligent conversation back and forth. But if you get angry over some shit, it's like... You just give yourself away. Oh, That's I love it. Give yourself away. Yeah. Yeah. I love the discussion. Yeah. yeah, I love the discussion we had. <clears throat> no, I'm I'm excited, and I like I like when you put stuff like that because uh, one of the things I really really appreciate that you do, and I feel like all of us do. If if anyone goes off the handle the most, probably me, who crosses line. But I think you you do a really good job of uh, of going back and forth in a in a healthy debate with people where a lot of people that are reading the conversation uh, benefit from it. Because you allow the other person to explain themselves. It doesn't turn into a name-calling thing. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm going to challenge this person, and let's keep going back and forth. And I love that. And some people think it's like, you know, you have this one side of people that think it's, oh, oh, it's stupid, and oh, why do you even engage? But it's like, no, I think when you do it with the intent that we do most of the time, which is I'll I'll engage in a a good, intelligent conversation with someone. Someone talking shit, it's like, I'm not going to waste my time with. But if you have, if you're calling calling something out and you want to get into a conversation, like, let's do it so people can learn. prod you a little bit to where you, you know, your sources are and like, you know, where you got information from. And yeah, exactly. Like, give, give me more details. Like, if you can't provide more details and you just want to say no, like it's this way, yeah. like, <laughs> like you're just a people kid. are bro- about nutri- you're a kid. nutrition and politics, dude. Nutrition, politics, and religion. Well, it's because like that, because it's so. Like, why can't uh, we just discuss it? Because there's a lot of information out there that's designed to sway your opinion, and it's clever the way they say it. For example, if you hear people who are say that they're opposed to tax cuts, they'll say they're opposed to tax cuts because they'll say. Oh, the wealthy are just getting another break. So, in other words, they're upset that they're not getting something and someone else is. So that's the that's the the, the thing that's getting tapped into with that. Now, someone could argue and say we're going to have more debt, which is an intelligent uh, that's an intelligent point, and there is validity to that. But the whole like, but the rich are getting a break. Um, are you paying more? Oh, you're not. But they are getting more back. Why is that a bad thing? So I ask questions because I want to know what people think and what the problem, what, what's the real problem, not just what you're told the problem is. And one of them is, you know, understanding that whenever you collect taxes, it's a, it, you're automatically destroying wealth every single time you do that. Just from the simple act of collecting it and then having a bureaucracy to handle it and then redistribu- redistribute it somehow, that costs money by itself. So you collect $1,000, even if you do it as efficiently as you can, it's, you're, you're, you've already destroyed wealth just in that collection and redistribution process. So that alone destroys wealth. So when I try to explain that to people, it starts to make more sense. But it's it's 
It's the, those nutrition. Right religion, now we politics, base everything so, off of how. Right now we base everything off of how it directly affects us, which is not like true economics, dude. Not if you're global economics. If we're looking at how we're going to affect the entire country and the world, like my personal income and how it affects me should not be the only thing that dictates whether I'm pro or anything also. Well, well here's a, So just because it yeah. might hurt my taxes 100 up or down, whatever that may be. Like to me that those are all arbitrary numbers because what really fucking matters is what it potentially could do for the economy and hopefully that in turn maybe it doesn't pay me right now, but hopefully it pays me in 3 or 5 years when we actually Well, it's it a rolled. fundamental question. Who do you who do you think spends money the best? Do you think a an individual entity or organization that has that didn't earn it and has no consequences for wasting it spends it better than the person who earned it and who pays the consequences of spending it poorly. Who do you think is going to spend it better? Now I, I I'll all day long. Yeah, but a lot of people don't understand what that means like that because we don't we, people don't understand the Federal Reserve and how we do with money and how we reprint money. They don't understand that like how how the well, government you, doesn't pay for. If it. I give some if if you had ten grand if I give you ten thousand dollars and I say to you. Go to Vegas and gamble this. And by the way, whatever you lose, I'll replace. You're going to gamble differently than if it was your ten thousand dollars. And if you lost it, you lost it. Right. It's just a different decision making process. So when you, when people keep more of their money, they tend to spend it better than than when someone else takes that money from them and pays no consequences for fucking it up. And that's why you get lots of waste. So I, you know, when and, and you can make the argument all day long about. Are they going to, you know, what are they going to spend it on? And whatever they spend it on is typically better than what someone else is going to spend that other person's money on. Well, I use the example of my buddy and I said, I know this is all anecdotal because it's our own personal business. But, you know, if the, if those new tax laws, you know, save us, let's say, you know, uh, hypothetically a hundred to $200,000 a year, like that's not going out and buying me a Lamborghini. That's now I have this money I can reinvest into staffing, which we need so bad, which is the number one thing that you need when you need to scale. So it would be people. Which would be more jobs and more money going to somebody who actually now has more money who can now go spend it in the economy. This makes more sense. But let's even go back. Let's go back a few. Th- uh, let's go back a few. And steps. I know someone's going like, "Oh, that's not how everybody." Yeah, I know it's not how every company would. It, There's going to be some greedy CEO that but, puts it all in his back pocket. But that's pocket. the point. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't matter. So let's say you did take that extra hundred thousand dollars and you went and bought yourself a new brand new Corvette, an expensive Corvette. There's people that make that car. There's a company that produces that car. There are people who are employed. To, to produce that car. There are people who make the tires in that car. There are people that, you know, make the gas that goes in the car. Like, it's still not Stimulate. bad. It's still stimulating. Just because economy. it looks like an expensive yeah. car and you think to yourself like, oh, we, you know, that's a waste of... It still is is something that needs to be produced by other people yeah. and kept up by other people. Well, what it, what, well, then some people will say, well, what if they just took that money and just threw it in the bank then and didn't give it to anybody? That's where, you're, that's where the investments come from. The, you know, the money that goes in the bank doesn't just sit there. That's very important money for the economy. That's how loans come from. That's where investment comes from. So it's a fundamental belief. Do you think bureaucracy will spend money better than the people who earn it and who pay the price for spending it poorly? Who do you think is going to spend it better? That's the that's the fundamental question. Then there's a moral question. Yeah. You earned it. Why shouldn't you keep more of what you earn? There's, that's the moral question as well. Right. But that's a discussion. Now we can have an int- intellectual discussion, but not the whole like, well, he gets a cut and I don't. So what? Yeah, you should too. Everybody should. <laughs> the argument shouldn't be he shouldn't. The argument should be I also should. Right. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird. It is it's weird. weird. Well, it gets, like I said, it gets back into it's like a you know politics, religion, nutrition. All three of them, you get the same type of somebody identifies with something, and and a lot of times it's something with one of those three things has impacted their life significantly, or somebody close to them significantly that now they identify with that. So with politics, it's very common that you see somebody who doesn't even have a side they stand on very much until something, you know, affects them to where they lose a job or they can't get a surgery, you know, or they get to wait in line for something or something fucks them personally. And now they become they then are now emotional over the decision. And now all of their research, everything that they look for is to confirm what they're already angry about. And now you become this zealot. You know, you get to become into this person that is so dogmatic and attach themselves. I feel the same. I see the same thing with religion. I see it with nutrition. Nutrition. You get somebody who is you know seen results for the for nutrition and, and, and working out they find something that works really good for them changes their life they're in the best shape of their life they've never felt Become like an this evangelist right now saying, yeah. now they fucking identify with ex- just that way of training or just that way of eating it's no fucking different politics religion nutrition yeah. all of them people get like yeah that. it's crazy it's like it's like if somebody said you know <laughs> I, I'm, I don't eat wheat because I feel so much better my skin's clear I've lost weight 
and then someone else comes out with a study and says, oh, you know, wheat's not a problem. Everybody, you know, wheat isn't, doesn't cause issues. And then the other person gets pissed off. First off, it doesn't change the fact that you feel better without it. So what the fuck's the difference if a study <laughs> says, you see what I'm saying? Right, right. But yeah, there, there's that whole identification process and it, it, it prevents good debate and discussion. And you know, it's funny, social media is encouraging that so much, man. Yeah. You're going, you, you ever, you scroll through your feed. I start seeing articles about shit I want to read. That's when I know I need to start liking other stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. No, like no. I want to read the opposite because right. it can't be all what well, I remember, think. I I speculated that this is going to be one of the greatest challenges going forward in the next ten years or so is this mm -hmm. generation coming up that's already it's already it's already formulated for them, man. They already oh, yeah. by the time They've they fall around forever, right? And getting all this information, like exactly what they're into, what they like, and right. they just feed it right up to them. So it'll it'll yeah. it'll be interesting to see what what things come out to help that generation coming up to find things that conflicts with their already their beliefs or what they've been mm -hmm. reading already like what are you going to have to go somewhere to research that we'll see some smart guy will come up with some algorithm that like okay <laughs> these all the things that you like yeah. here's the the opposite. challenger yeah. here's, here's the opposite page <laughs> oh shit then then you got to trust somebody to do that for you <laughs> yeah right yeah right <laughs> what are you guys doing for new year's by the way Oh, yeah. I'm going down to pick up a new puppy. Uh, oh shit! So yeah, before, what kind of right dog? before the new year, a Weimaraner. Yeah, because my other one passed last year, so that was is one of those things. My wife like it was. It's actually thing. almost a year exactly, yeah. right? When we did the Paul Check episode, I don't know if people even knew because I didn't talk about it, but yeah, that like my dad, my dog got hit by a car like that day. Do the kids know you're getting another dog? Yeah, no, they know. We told them like Christmas, so they're all pumped. Yeah, what do you guys so gonna name gonna it? Cool. Uh, so my wife uh, came up with Arlo, and I was like, that's cool. Arlo? Oh, Arlo. Arlo, that's cool. Arlo and me. Yeah. Yeah. There's, that? Is that a movie? Yeah, it's either a movie or a book. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is I've really? seen that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Milo and me. There's a Marlo or Arlo. My it's Arlo? Marlo. Yeah, it sounds like it. But it's something yeah. like that. Something like that. That's I cool. could be totally wrong. But you, so you guys are going to go, that's <laughs> yeah. what you're doing on <laughs> Christmas Eve. Right. Yeah. So on Christmas Eve, you're going to go grab a dog? Uh, no. We're, that's what we're doing the next two days. Mm. So. Yeah, you gotta, he's right. gonna drive hell far for it. Yeah, San where's Diego. it? Oh, all the way down there. Yeah, we pick it up from a breeder. Can you fly it back? I mean, you could, but then it's like you know the the trauma and all that. You know, like my mm -hmm. friend actually had them like crate and like basically fly it from the breeder from like Kansas to his house. Yeah, which you know the dog was like super like skittish forever. Uh -huh. So I saw that and I was like, ah. what are those dogs bred for? What's the what's the history hunting. of that breed? It's all is it? It's hunting. Uh yeah, hunting yeah. What kind of like what a bird dog? Oh okay, yeah, yeah, like pheasants and stuff. Is their 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 fur is supposed to be? Is it waterproof? Um, or water resistant? It's I'm sure it is. Yeah, because they like it's to a swim. Short area. Mm. Yeah, they're always in the water. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. I never heard that. Yeah. Yeah, what, are, what, are, what, are, what are bulldogs bred to hunt? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're for herding bulls, bro. Hot, hot dogs, yeah. herding bulls, skateboards. <laughs> No, yeah. not the England, not the one you have. You're yeah, talking about the old. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about the like the, the way they used to look. Well, that's all part of them. It's like saying you're not full Italian because you don't have the same. It seems. Well, same not, no, dude. I yeah, look you, like it's a, you, <laughs> bro. The, a, a modern like the English bulldog you have does not looks nothing like the the bulldog. Just too. They, no. They're stretched out. They're taller and longer. You know? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, you're not as you're not as, agile. You're bro. not as big as the old Greek gods. And yeah. you guys, <laughs> you're saying, dude, it's like the same thing, bro. No, you get to claim Italian, dude, and all the Italian <laughs> great traits. Bro, and I'll, my English bulldogs get to have all the bro, great. No, fucking the original <laughs> the original bull baiting dogs were like taller and uh, like, they look more like the American bulldog. Yeah, 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 yeah what they yeah, look yeah. like. Yeah, yours was it's like an American be, bulldog crossed with an English bulldog. Looks kind of like with the old bulldogs. Yeah, because you're dog's bred to be just cute yeah <laughs> i mean that's what they're bred for right to be stick to be, your hand in his mouth see how yeah. cute he is wrinkly face. well i don't mean they're not you know what i mean they're, yeah. they're bred to be like no uh, no pets. and they are lovers dude they're definitely yeah. they're definitely uh you know family dogs they can be around kids oh, i really, love squeezing those really dogs kids yeah no they're they're definitely lovers. how are they with kids really good actually bentley gets a little excited and he's he doesn't know his own weight so there'll be times where he goes to like lick a kid's face and he'll send the kid back like four or five feet. <laughs> so I do get a little nervous. And if the kid's energy is really high, so like the dogs pick up on the energy, yeah. right? I'm always trying to teach Katrina this too. And she fucking, dogs start fighting. She starts screaming, getting scared too. I'm like, that just heightens the whole fucking situation. I'm like, you got to take control and be the alpha when that right. happens. So anyways, that the dog, when, when kids come in, if their energy is really high and they're like ah, screaming and yelling and like hitting the dog and running and stuff like that, they think they're, they'll want to mm -hmm. play with them. And they'll they'll elevate, and then when they go to jump on them or something like that, they'll send the kid flying. Did so. you get them fixed? No, 
You didn't? So they're, they got full. They got balls. They're fully loaded. <laughs> I want my dogs to have balls. Hold on a second, though. But then wow. it's just the two of them. So they just psh, prison love. They don't really yeah. get a chance to. Yeah. No, they, and they don't they don't bang each other. They don't like, like if one of them tries to get on the other one, they, ooh, gets, it gets. Maybe when, the, because you're around, though. Oh, maybe. Maybe when you're not around. <laughs> maybe. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I have cameras, though, so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, get know. off. Yeah. Adam's watching. Well, I've us. seen them. I've <laughs> definitely seen him, one of them attempt on the other one. When one of them's in heat, the, or one of them's fucking horny, whatever, is <laughs> ends up, well, girls are in heat, right? Yeah. So when, whenever one of them wants, wants to, he'll try and mount the other one. And they end up getting in a fight. So. They're frustrated. You got to get them some. Like, you got to get some, some dog. Like you got to get some dog thing. They, no, they, when we travel a lot. When we travel, some we take them over to the doggy hotel, and there's plenty of chicks over there for the chicks. Do they really get to bang other dogs when they're over there? I, I'm or sure. Just smell them. I personally yeah. think she. Uh, I, she's not supposed to, but I'm sure she does let them because there are. They, that's the, our breeder, <laughs> and they have great genes, and it would be great to get free sperm from my dog. And I'm not going to say otherwise if he's over there having a good time. Are they super ha- like relaxing, cool when you get back? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they yeah, probably yeah. are. They're totally yeah. banging. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm providing free sperm right now for some of the, somebody's dogs. <laughs> They're going to the Mustang. I should. Ranch. I get. I think you get paid uh, twenty-seven or three grand for that plus a what? Plus the free, yeah. That's, three, but they have to successfully impregnate. Right. Or just three grand a shot. Right. Shop. Right. So a lot of times they do that, or the, the price of the dog, like one dog. So you, as the stud, if you're the male, if you have the the, the male, if you own the male. And you stud them out to like someone like that. It's normally the price of the what the dog's worth or the first your pick of the litter. And so it's we we could ah, be setting that English up. English bulldogs having sex has got to be hilarious. Yeah, it's not that weird. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not like two big meatballs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of sounds. Yeah, lots of like guttural. Noises. I used to have a I used to have a pug. And uh, he was... You would have a pug. Uh, oh, pugs are great. <laughs> so cute. You're a pug guy. <laughs> he was very strange. He uh, he was... After watching Men in Black? Or bro, like, he yeah. used to sit in the sun and he'd just sit and stare up in the sun. So I used to call him a philosopher because he just... Because I feel like he's thinking about some shit right now. He's going deep. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he's, he's just like me. He's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. going deep. Like, right where now. did he throw that? This, was he really throwing a stick or was he faking out? <laughs> yeah. But the other thing too is he was easily the horniest dog I've ever seen in my entire life. Easily the horniest dog <laughs> I've ever... Any dog that came over my house, he would relentlessly hump. And wow. when I say relentless, I'd have to like separate him. And then he'd lose his breath and get asthma and shit. Cause really? He, yes. Oh. It was just so crazy. Did he, how long did he live? Uh, we ended up having to give him away to a friend of ours. Do you know if he's still alive? Yeah. Yeah, he's still alive. He oh, just like hump like really big dogs too. And it didn't matter who's it didn't yeah. matter what dog was That's there. That's always hilarious. Watch a little dog like try and climb up some big He dog. was male, female, big, small, whatever, man. He was just See my boys my boys want to hump uh when they when women come in, they can you can smell the estrogen and they're all over girls. Like, yeah. They won't hump a guy's leg or anything like that, but if there's a girl that's getting down to their level low, they'll be trying to jump on really? her or yeah. stuff. I don't yeah. know. He tried to do me the other day. <laughs> you got a lot of estrogen. blanket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Putting out them vibes. That, back, that backfired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a backfire joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to go, we're heading back to that uh, Discovery house. For your New Year's, huh? Yeah, we're, we're heading up there with- um, That was could, a nice house. Sweet. No, it was cool. I, I liked it. I mean, I like houses like that. They're big and open, you know? So I, especially when we have a big family like hers, like there'll be 20 something people there at one point. Now, do you guys get smashed? Her family drinks, yeah, for sure. You guys all, you guys gonna get smashed too? I don't know. Uh, Are you saying like in general for New Year's? Yeah. Not. No, I normally don't. I normally don't. This would be, I, if there was a time that I if would- somebody's this, watching the kids, I would. This yeah. would probably be a time that I would. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't, that I don't really enjoy getting smashed anymore too much. Just a little bit, you know. Yeah, no. I, I, ever since we uh, started drinking the Moscow Mules, before that, dude, I don't ever drink alcohol. But those actually sit well in my stomach. Yeah, I can have three, four of them fuckers that Justin makes, and I feel good. Justin, man. you're getting good at that, by yeah, the way. Yeah, they are really. Trying, good. Trying they to are. really hone in on that. I think you know it's funny. I want to make like a. We talked about a recipe guide or a book or whatever that. Let's make a drink. But I want. I was thinking like I don't want it to be just. Purely healthy, like I wish it was like more like a mind pump. So like things like, like on that, the fringe, a little like bit. yeah, like the the Moscow mules. And I had these. Oh man, I had these apple pie. Katrina made these apple pie treats that were so good, and there there's nothing really healthy about them. They're they're less bad than some. Of those. It was they're flourless, and they, they they didn't take a ton of sugar. And there's an apple in the middle and cinnamon, so it's like. They weren't like over the top bad, and they actually didn't upset my stomach. I tried a few of them, so I'd like to do some things like that in our 
our recipe book. We used to make an alcoholic beverage with like Organifi green juice or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. We already got those Thrive Market cups for uh, <laughs> the <laughs> we, copper we'll use all of our, up there. We'll get yeah. all of our sponsors together. Yeah, we're going to unite all the sponsors, make sure it all works drink. out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, cup, yeah. we already use, uh, I use a lot of Organifi stuff. Um, Katrina and I go through that pretty quick, man. I we, we use the green juice a lot. Have you brought, you haven't brought any of them here yet, the treats that you guys have. You guys make so many different. No, I did. I brought those ones that one oh, day. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They were yeah. good. Yeah, I brought I brought those down here. Those were those are the cookies, right? So we were making a lot of cookies heading into the holidays, and that's what. So Katrina, pretty much what we gave, she made these 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 cute little like uh, you know tin foil bowl looking things that had like a ho ho Santa Claus lid, and uh, she baked cookies for all the because we had so many families. We saw this trip. I mean, we probably saw at least twelve or fifteen like you know aunts and uncles and cousins and shit like that. So she made every family you know, cookies and she packaged them in there and they're all the, did they like them? They're all, well, I haven't heard the feedback yet. They're really good. Yeah. We gave them all out. We gave them all out. So I'll, at new year's we'll be back together. So we'll ask people like, dude, Hey, what'd speak- you, what'd you think of the healthy cookies? Dude, speaking <laughs> yeah. of which dude, I almost got found out, which I, I should have let myself get found out. It was a good opportunity, but you know, how you put out cookies and milk for Santa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we did that at my house. Right. And, uh, my daughter, she's eight years old and she goes, Papa, why are, why are we doing, um, gluten-free, <laughs> cookies. Santa's, she goes, Santa's, yeah, yeah. Santa's got she some has, problems. She goes, "Why are we doing gluten-free cookies in coconut milk?" And so I'm like, "Oh, um, I'm like, you know, uh, a coconut milk's got this kind of fat in it. It's real healthy, or whatever." Yeah. She's like, "Yeah, but you said regular milk's healthy too." She said, D- "Does he? I, th- I thought he drank like regular milk, like we do." And I'm like, "What do I say now?" <laughs> so I'm like, "Oh, I wanted yeah. to give him something a little different for whatever." And she could see her face; her like her wheels are turning. You know what I mean? She's right. like, "That's your milk, motherfucker." Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, Dad. Yeah, because yeah. we had we Come had out with these it. gluten-free sugar cookies and uh, coconut milk. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like Santa's on a diet, honey. Yeah. yeah. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make him healthier this year. Yeah. Yeah. He barely fit down the chimney last year. Yeah. Yeah. We don't even have a chimney. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 they haven't yeah. asked how he gets in yet. Huh? They haven't even asked how he gets it's in. It's always yet. magic. Dude. Jumps through oh, the window. Magic. You just say magic. That's a good point, right? Yeah. I think that's what I would say too. Yeah. He breaks in like a cat burglar. Yeah. Bring Scare on, him. Bring on the bird. The magical bird. Today's quad is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. Our first question is from Carter's Consumptions. Let's say one lacks proper levels of serotonin in their body and believes some of their fatigue, depression, and digestion symptoms are caused by it. How would you go about upping those levels of serotonin naturally? Wouldn't you address probably sleep first? Well, I mean, we'll go there, but I'll tell you this much. Mm -hmm. Your digestion is not caused by it. Your digestion issues are probably part of the cause of feeling like you have low serotonin. So there's a couple things you want to address here. Uh, the serotonin model is a little bit flawed. So we think, you know, serotonin is the answer to a lot of these, a lot of our problems. It makes us feel good. We yeah, we create you know s- selective serotonin reuptake inhibiting drugs. Uh, Prozac is like a common one we know about that increases circulating ser- serotonin in the brain. We think that solves depression in some cases. It seems to. In other cases, it doesn't seem to work well at all. Um, so uh, that all being known, uh, can you cause yourself to have um, dysfunctional or you know uh, serotonin issues? I should say issues with both the serotonin receptors themselves, because those can downregulate. So you may have normal levels of serotonin, but your serotonin uh, receptors may be downregulated, or have actual low serotonin levels, um, or you're just depressed. Maybe your serotonin levels are fine, but you still feel depressed. All of those issues, I think, can be can be improved upon with better digestion. Your gut actually produces the majority of serotonin in your body. So uh, your brain does produce some of it, but most of it's produced in the gut. There's a very, very strong connection. So would you recommend this person like going to get a test first and seeing what, what could be going on with their gut? Or would you just be like, would you give a generic probiotic, go eat these things, stay away from this? Dude, po- fix, your, fix your digestion. When you fix your digestion, you should notice... 
improvements on all of those things. They're connecting now gut issues very strongly to depression, anxiety, um, other mental disorders. They're connecting, um, uh, you know, gut issues to a lot of different issues, but in particular to to mental issues. Hmm. So I would say, fix your gut first, and the protocol for that is the one that I always recommend: like eliminate processed foods, eliminate common food intolerances. Um, start with that. Eat, you know, uh, good good vegetables, healthy fats. Don't avoid any macronutrient, uh, you know, specifically. So. Some people keto may help, but other people that may hurt. So I don't typically recommend going hardcore in any direction uh, initially. If you do find that carbohydrates aggravate your digestive issues, then I would say avoid those. Although too low of you know carbohydrates are used to be to to turn into serotonin as well, so that may even be an issue. So typically, I'd say eat balanced and avoid foods that cause gut issues and start to heal your gut, and you may start to notice improvements in depression. And then exercise. Exercise is one of the best things you could do for depression. In fact, when they do head-to-head studies with uh, exercise versus uh, anti-depression uh, you got to look at drugs. sleep, too, at one point. Sleep is huge. If you've got somebody who's complaining of fatigue and serotonin, too, like I know you've got digestion, then that could be causing a lot of things, but so could lack of sleep, too. So if you're, if you're getting lack of or poor sleep, you know, every night and pushing high stress levels, I, that some of those symptoms are all going to look really close to if you got high stress, a lot of times you'll feel like you have digestive issues. You could have fatigue and depression going on. So stress could be a factor and sleep would definitely be an indicator of that. So I'd look at, I mean, how do you feel when you, when you don't get good sleep the next day? Right. You're you're all, you always feel terrible. Right. Fatigued. You feel depressed. And that tends to compound, uh, over time as Mm. you have, and it's not just the sleep quantity. It's also sleep quality. Yes. You know, I was talking to a family member last night uh, at our our party, and um, she was telling me how she goes to bed at 9 p.m. and wakes up at 6 p.m. And so, because we were talking about, she was having some of these issues, and we were, and I was telling her about sleep, and I said, well, sleep's real important. She goes, oh, I go to bed every night at 9 p.m. And I said, well, what time do you get up? She goes, 6 a.m. So I said, oh, okay, well, that's, that's plenty of sleep. I said, well, how well do you sleep? And then the story changed. And she says, well, almost every single Gets night. Up all like hours of the night? Or yeah, what? yeah. she's like, almost every night I wake up at least once and I'm yeah. wide awake and it takes me an hour or two. Isn't that interesting? A lot of people don't really associate that. Like they think that they're, they're a total amount of hours. So eight well, when hours. You're I am getting eight hours of sleep. But you also think like you're normal. Interrupted the whole time. You yeah. also think you're normal. Yeah. I mean, I thought as a kid, I remember I, I slept on like a hand-me-down bed for most of my life and just was a toss. I tossed and turned all night long. Never could sleep, never could sleep, and all of a sudden I get a nice bed when I when I got older and moved out, and all of a sudden I had like this this sleep that I never even thought I could have. I just thought I used to tell people like, oh, I'm not, I'm a restless sleep, the drooling sleep, right, right. I'm I'm just a restless sleeper, you know. So, so a lot of times people don't realize that they don't have good sleep because they've never had it, and if they've, they've gotten them by in their whole life that way. And so they don't look at that, but yet they don't realize that it could be a compounding thing that's been going on for 15, 20 years of their life. They've been having this restless sleep. And yeah, sure, it didn't bother you when you were 22, but now that you're 35 and you've had kids and you got work and marriage and all this other stress in your life, now that fucking sleep, lack of sleep is starting to catch up to you. So I think I think I always try and drive people now back that way is to mm-hmm. kind of at least eliminate that first that's not potentially you because that could be causing a lot of these issues too i like to tell people to think of sleep like they would a, like a good workout like when you're when you're going to go when you know you're going to have a good workout typically you start your workout out with some kind of a priming session a warm-up right. mobility a work there. you have a bit of a routine that you do before your workout whether that be drink a little caffeine or coffee or have a pre-workout or whatever then you're finally ready you've done your stretches you've done your warm-up you've done your priming your you know your 15 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever then you get into your workout and you have a great workout very rarely is it where you're at total rest and then you jump right into a hard workout well sleep is similar in the sense that you you're you're on your computer you're on your TV you're having you know real intense conversation with someone you can't go right into sleep and expect to have good quality it takes time to wind down and studies will show that Giving yourself about an hour before bed, where you turn off all electronics, uh, you lower the the you lower dim the lights in your Put house. Yawn, yawn. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Actually, that's true. Go you know, listen to quiet music, meditate, drink chamomile tea, but give yourself about an hour to be prepare yourself for sleep. 
Cool the temperature down in your room. That's an that's another one. Don't sleep with clothes on. These are all proven, by the way, in studies. And you then you are making me hot, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, keep going. But it, it actually uh, helps. It helps with sleep quality. Uh, you know, a good seven quality hours of sleep is going to benefit you more than ten shitty hours uh, of sleep. Um, and I, then exercise is the other one. Like you, uh, regular, consistent uh, activity is fantastic for producing serotonin and for upregulating the receptors for serotonin. Sunlight is another one. Go outside and get some sunlight. Um, it, it, producing that vitamin D and that vitamin D acts like a hormone in the body. Low levels of vi- vitamin D are very strongly connected to do you think? Do you think we might get into some of this at the Fit Expo? I feel like because we're going to be talking about the intuitive eating and stuff like that, we might head in this direction a little bit. That's right. We're heading over there. We should probably let people know. What are the dates that we're going to be speaking? Is it the fourth and fifth? No, I think it's fifth and sixth, Doug. Isn't it Mm -hmm. fifth and sixth? It's the Saturday and Sunday, first weekend of January. So me and Adam will be talking at the expo. I think we have two talks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's one Saturday and one Mm -hmm. Sunday, and it's the it's on the it's on the sixth and seventh. There you go. And we'll be talking about um, intuitive eating, and we'll be and probably we'll be covering some of the stuff that we're talking about. Right, that's why I said that. Right so now. it just yeah. reminded me of that that we have that coming up, and that this is the type of top topic that we're going to get into because I feel like not a lot of people are talking about this right now. So mm-hmm. I feel like that'll be kind of cool, right? At the yep. when we're at the Fit Expo. Now you can. There are natural supplements that you can take that may help that are not prescription. One of them is Sam E. That's S A M, and then the letter E. That's actually a prescription antidepressant for mild uh, depression in Europe. Here in the U.S., you could buy it um, over the counter. If you're, high, if, you have, uh, if you're bipolar, probably not a good idea because it can trigger manic episodes. But for mild depression, SAMe is effective. Uh, ashwagandha is another one that's been shown to alleviate depression. Uh, one of the ways it's believed to work is it uh, increases the receptor density to serotonin. So it doesn't increase serotonin, but it makes the serotonin that you have uh, be more effective uh, in your brain, um, and then I think reishi, if I'm not mistaken, is a ne- is a mushroom that you could take for depression. But none of those will do much for you if your diet is poor. You're not exercising. You're not getting sunlight. You're not getting good sleep. Those are the most important things. Start you Start with the big rocks. That's it. Next question is from Art of April. My chiropractor says most of my hip pain is due to a weak core. What is a good at home core routine I can do daily to help with this? What are the best moves? You know, I tell you what, um, when you think of the, of the core and you want to think of exercises to work on the core, think of the muscles and their primary functions. So you have abdominals that shorten the distance between your pelvis and your rib cage. So that would be like a crunching type motion. Um, you can either bring your rib cage closer to your pelvis, like a sit-up, or you could bring your pelvis closer to your rib cage, which would be like a reverse crunch. Then you have internal and external obliques that stabilize the core, but they also rotate the body. So you may want to invo- involve some kind of rotation movement. And then the TVA, right? The mm-hmm. muscles that mm-hmm. suck in and draw in the midsection. So you probably want to Create your body's natural weight belt. That's it. Support system. So I think if you address those kind of three main things, you're probably... You're probably all good. I mean, if for a, a great one would be the six pack or the no BS six pack abs, or to go through our YouTube mm-hmm. series where we've done core and ab stuff, so and go through those yeah, types of videos. Or deactivators and uh, the vacuum pose and all that. Kind what of about stuff. some now, tension moves? To- I think it's important yeah. though too that she, I think she knows too that, that, and I know your chiropractor is telling you this, but it's not just your core. Like right. if you if you've got if she's got dysfunction and poor recruitment patterns. And she just gets a strong ass core. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily going to uh, fix her hip issues. So she's got to address that also. So, but I I think having a, a weak core can uh, exaggerate that right or make that worse. And I think having a strong core is necessary to help support that good system while you bu- you address what's going on with you. But to say it's just from a weak core that's a little vague because if you have hip issues, that's not right. It's that's well, it's not. definitely a communication issue. So, like, one way to communicate, you know, and, and you need to get reconnected to a certain part of your body or a certain movement or function is isometrics and is to be able to kind of create more tension and uh, get that recruitment uh, established again, that communication between the brain and um, firing with the neurons to the muscles. So, um, if you want to just go ahead and focus on like certain areas of like hip function or, or you know, like, or, like, going through the entire core and building up that process of like each one of those uh, crunching moves or, um, you know, twisting moves. 
um, and just really holding and solidifying it and reinforcing it. Um, it's a great way to just kind of rebuild that 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 firing kind of sequence. To you, know, you know, a good old fashioned plank is a, a great right. a great movement to build uh, better tension and control of your. And the way that you you know have have shown mess too, with, with the different the, pelvic yeah, positions, right? right? So if when you, you get into you a plank, the, if you have the funds, Prime Pro and No BS six pack abs, like that's literally like the answer for you for this question right now. Like mm-hmm. Prime Pro, go literally to your go to the hips part. And address all the issues potentially with your hips. Use the No BS six pack abs to do core training and ab training. That's going to help solidify all that, and and you're good. And if you want to couple that with a weight training program that you're already currently doing on other maps, and I'd say that. But those two right there is like that's why we created those programs for people just like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Dunn Drummer: Are behind the neck presses good or bad? Ooh. Man, those were all the rage back in the day. They were. When when, when I was... And then it went the other extreme, it right? It did. It went when, one extreme, the other extreme. When I was a kid, uh, growing up, reading the bodybuilding magazines, like all the top bodybuilders did... Behind. Who did it? Like Ferrigno and everybody like did. It and everybody? was like a staple pressing movement. The the Barbarian Brothers. I don't know if you guys ever knew what those guys were. There was these these two characters, these super like crazy strong dudes that would go. Uh, they work out a lot of Venice, you know, golds and make a lot of noise and do crazy shit. Those guys would behind the neck press over three hundred pounds. It was like it was something that a lot of bodybuilders did and it got really popular. And then. Behind the neck exercises seem to have fallen. They fell out of favor. I feel like they've just lost mobility. You know, the, the mount, this race to get like super big with machines and like have, having all these fixed positions all the time, and like hypertrophy yeah. being the focus. Like, I wonder if like it just lost. They lost favor in doing stuff like that because you know the mobility wasn't I, there anymore. Well, most most bodybuilders are even the, like at a professional level are genetic flexible freaks too. That too, I, yeah. I I don't I haven't met one that is like actually stiff as board. Everyone teases and acts like they're so stiff and rigid. They look like that when they're walking and they waddle, but most of the guys at that level have this just, they're genetic freaks. They have this ability to not only put on muscle like crazy, but then it doesn't limit their range of motion that bad. I mean, you remember- Besides getting in the way, you mean they're just not tight. Right, right. Which tri- is a trip. It is a trip. Because it's, it's true. Because it used to trip me out that it, it when I started pushing up 230, 240, and I could be lean in great shape, but fucking jacked, like I'm just not functional. I become extremely tight. I cannot. My, I've lost my range of motion. Like it's crazy. And and you think that if oh well, that could have been the way you're training. No, it's like these guys have, they have this ability to still do the splits and do shit like that. That's not like because he's working on going doing the splits all the time. It's because Tom Platts is a good yeah. example of that. He was a bodybuilder in the uh, 70s and 80s, and that guy was very very flexible. He's also one of the strongest squatters in bodybuilding history. I think he did. If I'm not mistaken, I think he squatted 315 something like 50 something times and 500 pounds. That's like crazy. Yeah, just insane amount of and crazy flexibility. But you know, uh, it's neither. It's neither a good or a bad exercise. If you can do it, here's a here's a a little trick here. Well, whatever. talk about why we we just we just recently didn't put it in one of our programs and we wanted to, but we all agreed that. We didn't. Most people don't have the, yeah. the mobility to do it, it right. It's really right. just That's mobility, all. yeah. Because we, we, we agree that it could be an incredible movement, and it could be something that, uh, I you mean- You could I, work towards it. Right. right? And, and there's a process that you could go through to get there, but yeah, for us to just throw that in there as a new move, you know, is, is probably not the best. No, here's the deal. If you can do an exercise or a movement with good control, good mobility, and good stability, then that exercise is and good. And pain-free. Right. Then mm-hmm. that exercise is good. If you can't do an exercise with any of those three things, then that exercise is bad. It doesn't matter what it is. That it could be a it could be a push up. If you don't have the mobility and stability to do a push up, then a push up now is a bad exercise for you. Uh, a behind the neck press, if you can do it right, it's a great exercise. I personally really enjoy doing behind the neck presses. I do them uh, at least two or three days a mo- uh, out of the month. Um, I enjoy doing them because it is a different recruitment pattern than a standard military press mm-hmm. so i feel it differently well i think and it, i don't like to lose that i think it promotes good posture because it's yeah. countering one of the most common things that we see in people so right. I, I like it for that reason you know but for me i remember when i started doing them i didn't do them until i did them early on in my weightlifting career for the first couple of years then i avoided them for many many years and then i went back like just recently after i got done competing to get to the point where i could put but i had to start with the bar Mm-hmm. I mean, I had to go all the way down to a 45-pound bar, which is really light for me to shoulder press, 
and just keep getting the getting my shoulders to retract and stay in a retracted position while I move this bar behind my head and up was really challenging. It's a totally different skill. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to to manage. But I always found too that you know, it, it translated well to backloaded squats too. So mm. I felt like really strong, uh, you know, in my posture and everything, my upper back, like from doing those uh, types of presses. Yeah, so. there's, there, there's, uh, you know, some, some people will say that the behind the neck press doesn't, because when you do a military press, a heavy one, you actually, believe it or not, you actually work a little bit of uh, some of the fibers of the, the, the highest part of your upper chest. Mm-hmm. And it's a really heavy in the anterior portion of your deltoid. Some some would say that the behind the neck press involves more of the lateral head of the deltoids. Um, I personally, the way I feel it is, I feel good mid back recruitment from a behind the neck press because when you come down to the bottom, you have to have really good uh, thoracic uh, engagement, uh, mm-hmm. and you need to be able to engage the upper back. Otherwise, if you if you round your shoulders at all, yeah. you'll hit your neck. All with right. the behind the neck press, not going to work out. And for I you. go really light with it, and because I go so light, and I have to squeeze my arms back, I get a really good pump with the behind the neck press. So I really, really enjoy them. But most people just can't do them right. Yeah, most yeah. people don't have the shoulder mobility, and that's because of their. I mean, they're older, suffering from upper cross syndrome or whatever, and they they've got this. But dude, you look at old videos of the bodybuilders of the '70s, and hardly ever would they do a shoulder workout without doing. And they go all the way down. Like yeah. these guys would go all the way, touch their traps. I tell you what, and because people who say this is a terrible exercise are are full of shit. If you can you can develop this mobility if you work on it, it just takes time. No, I, I see. I think that's yeah. that's definitely a wrong way to say it too, because it's not. Because I like it. Fuck, who cares who did it 10, 20 years ago? I like it because it does. It forces you into good posture. You can't do a behind the neck behind the neck press without getting your shoulders in a proper position. Like you can't cheat that. Well, dude, like, o- you can't. Olympic lifters who arguably, I would say, among all resistance training type athletes or athletes that, that compete with weights, arguably, I, I would say Olympic lifters have the best shoulder mobility mm-hmm. um, just from the, the, the snatches and cleans and all the stuff they have to do. But they do an exercise where, I don't know what you call it, but they'll start with the bar on their traps and then they'll pop it up like they just finished the snatch bring it back down on oh, the just traps the behind the yeah. next push press but they go all the way down to their traps each mm-hmm, time yeah. and it's part of their routine uh, a famous strongman Mario Puchanowski you can find a YouTube video of him doing this with 315 hmm. where he's got it up on his traps and he it's like he does a it's almost like he's completing it's a push a, press yeah, yeah, but, yeah be, but behind yeah, the neck yeah the behind neck. the neck push press oh it's nasty oh, yeah, no, those, are, those are nasty Shan Trimble more talk on conspiracy theories, please. <laughs> well, Are there any conspiracy? Have we even talked about this yet? No. Do you guys have any? Have, you man. guys have any conspiracy theories that you think may actually be true? Well, I think I, yeah, I think Netflix is behind all these. <laughs> He's gonna stick with that <laughs> I one. I do man. like that one. I do. I think that. Well, I should let me retract that because I don't need Netflix fucking suing yeah. me or whatever like that. I have no idea who it is. I but I definitely think there's some conspiracy behind. All the coming forward of all the famous people in Hollywood that you know touch children or, or sexually harass somebody or did someone. It just seems like every day we have somebody who's going down, yeah. and it just seems odd that it's all happening together. Even stuff that's surfacing from twenty years ago and stuff like that's coming out right now. So that to me tells me that there's more. It's more than just a coincidence that all these this is happening at one time. And so then the next thing leads me to okay, who would benefit the most? from Hollywood technically going down or who would benefit the most from Hollywood stars going down. And the only companies I can see that really would benefit like that right now a lot is like Netflix. There's a company that like that's doing, you know, creating their own content now and soon having their own actors and shit. Mm, speaking mm-hmm. of which, I watched Bright. Did you watch that movie on, on I Netflix? I haven't seen I that did. yet. Did you watch it? I did. What'd you think of it? I was not impressed. I, I loved dis- it. I, the Brennan end Schaub, disappointed the fuck out of me. Well, Brendan Schaub, I saw Brendan Schaub's post and I knew it was coming. I was really excited to watch it. And then I saw his post saying like, oh, fuck the critics. They're wrong. This movie's dope as fuck. And so I was like, oh, cool. Okay. So I told Katrina, I'm like, I like Brendan Schaub. I think we, you know, we'd have similar taste in movies. And so I decided to watch it. And I was, I thought for sure that, okay, this is Netflix, like first attempt at a blockbuster bringing on actually dropping a full full length movie right so i really expected them to come out of the bank they got will smith so they got a big name actor so i thought okay there's mm-hmm. your first step plot seems interesting you know uh it was a major letdown for me yeah i thought yeah, i don't I, like the way it ended 
Yeah. I didn't oh, like yeah. there was nothing about it that I really liked. It had its moments of humor that I thought were great, which was very bad boys, uh, uh men in black esque. Mm-hmm. You know, so it kinda had that taste to it. Um, but I it just didn't appeal to me. The the plot wasn't good enough. It wasn't it didn't end well. Uh, the acting in it wasn't superb. Like I was let down. I was let down. I was dis- disappointed mm. in you, Netflix. Oh man, yeah. that's, that's too bad. I haven't seen it yet. And I was like, totally gonna watch it. You have to watch it. Yeah, I will have to see yeah. it now and give you. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's worth. But I mean, I liked Hellboy better. You know, I thought. Oh, yeah. yeah, I thought Hellboy. I actually, was, like, yeah, I liked Hellboy. Right, I so. thought Hellboy yeah. was cool. So I thought I liked it even better than that. And so huh. I had higher. Mind you, I had I had a lot. I had higher expectations for Netflix than their first movie to drop. Their first like blockbuster to drop because yeah, you get a name like Will Smith, like he's you know, and it's your first one, right? This is yeah. your first splash into hey, we're gonna start because advertising at movie theaters and shit like that to see. I think be, they could have ended it way better. Hmm. They yeah. had a good opportunity at the end, and it was kind of like what. Yeah, it was weak. I don't was, like the way it ended. It was totally mm. weak. No, so I wasn't. I wasn't happy. I'm with trying it. to think of conspiracy theories that I actually believe in. I know Sal has <laughs> a bunch of them, dude. I think. Uh, I think there's little bits of truth in a lot of them, though. You know, that's the shitty part. It's like, <laughs> yeah, because if you really think about, it, you're like, that could happen. You know, like there's some shitty people out there that could like orchestrate stuff and do things. You know, and well, there's conspiracy but, theories that I believed that then came out. To be true, like yeah. one of them was the uh, like drug prohibition, and one of the conspiracy theories was oh, yeah. that the uh, that the the government went hard after drugs because we had the counterculture movement mm-hmm. who was protesting the Vietnam War. They were causing a lot of problems. There was a lot of upheaval. We were in the middle of a Cold War. They pe- they they presented a threat uh, to us to destabilize us, which we don't want to do with the Cold War going on. So the government decided, well, how do we go after these peaceful protesters without like infringing on their liberties because they're all they're protesting. Like that's 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 protected by the constitution. So they made the drugs of the counterculture the, you know, the enemy. Mm-hmm. And so LSD, psilocybin, marijuana all became schedule 1, that way they could throw these people in jail. And then it comes out that that was true. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. exactly what happened. Yeah. You know. The other one that I that I subscribe to is that, you know, for a long time now, we've only had two political parties in power. I think for, it always looks like they fight and they hate each other and this, that, and the other. I think they fucking work together. I think they love each other. And I think that what they're trying to do is create the illusion of choice. They make you, they make you think your two choices are Coke and Pepsi. And those are the only choices you have. And so you forget about seven up, you forget about Sprite, you forget about Fanta, you forget about all that other stuff. You think I only have two choices, and I've seen this happen now several times where you'll have a candidate from another party come over and try to run, and they'll both work together to, to eliminate them, to, eliminate them, to mm-hmm. keep them from even well, you talking. Watch, yeah, they don't you, like the third party person. There's ever. no doubt in my mind it's like that. I mean, you you watch House of Cards? Yeah. I've only seen a few episodes. Wow. I, I Why? It doesn't make sense to me why you wouldn't love yeah, it. I got into that one. You will enjoy not, that show. Bro. This okay. is what it, it gets into all the fucking shit and the behind the scenes. I Not to say that House of Cards is what proves it's very the point. Accurate. But uh, yeah, I believe it's accurate <laughs> too. And sure I think it it's, is, it's right up the alley what you're talking about that I 100%. I mean, let's put it this way. If you make it all the way to the White House, dude, like- you you've been on your game for fucking a long time not for like five minutes like you weren't just like a popular guy or you did some really good shit and then someone said yeah. hey let's put this guy in the you're white like house a master manipulator at right that point. Yeah, you you're have, like a and fucking and how many of these candidates Jedi. were tied to somebody later on who was an opposite of what they support i mean you always see that it doesn't matter it's all part of their they're playing together and we're the ones that are getting beat all the time mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah i also I, think there's a there's a, i agree with that i also think there's real conspiracies against Besides what I just said about the counterculture, that there are, there are big conspiracies against the the you know liberalization of the laws on cannabis and uh, some of the science that's coming out showing its effectiveness against lots of different diseases. I think that pharmaceutical companies don't like that because you're dealing with a natural plant that you can't patent, and so they're trying to figure out ways to synthesize and make it patentable. You know, something you can patent, and until that happens, they're going to keep that shit illegal. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's uh, and I think, yeah. and that one's kind of. I mean, I don't have evidence to prove that, but I don't know very many people that would disagree with me. Well, I definitely believe in the flat Earth, so let's talk about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, let's go in that direction. Yeah, no, I, I do think though, like with the, the whole moon landing, like so the, another case scenario, like 
Oh, we didn't even talk about Elon Musk taking off yeah. his uh, taking off. Oh his yeah, rocket, remember that? Rocket, yeah, man. The, the rocket thing that happened just recently. But talk, talk about what what happened. I wouldn't even pay attention to that. You you didn't see Elon Musk taking off in his rocket over? No. What? He, wait, he yeah. flew in his own rocket. Was he in that? Yeah. I don't know if he was personally yeah, in it. He's he, definitely what? SpaceX. Yeah, that yeah, launched it, but yeah, I can't believe you. I thought yeah. for sure well, I, that I, was trippy. I know it's launched and How it made you? a bunch of you know a bunch of people film the. Yeah, yeah, I don't know anything. But what's the after deal about that? it? No, I haven't read anything on. It. I thought for sure. You, I expect like my, <laughs> my nerdy friend to They're be just able to read testing it. it. That's, That's as far as I got. I expected yeah. you yeah. to have read this no, already. No, I came sure. to work yeah. today, going like, you know, I can't wait to ask Sal about the fucking spaceship yeah. that's up and that just got launched. Yeah. You know what's what's no, great? but like landing on the moon, right? Yeah. So like it had to have happened. I mean, yeah. Look at how shitty our technology was back then and all that. But like, like there's both. So you have. The studio in in uh, you know Hollywood that's taking pictures and like setting it up and everything, making sure that you know worst case scenario, I'm sure like they're, they're going to take pictures and fake it, but at the same time, you know they're they're sending people to the moon. Dude, you gotta keep you gotta keep in mind that we have these organizations that exist in our in our country that are that exist solely to protect the interest of this country and to protect the you know our country, right? And depending on the size of the threat. They will go to great lengths to do that. So during the Cold War, that was a time when, when I mean, there were nukes pointed at, you know, Soviet Union and U.S. had nukes pointed at each other, you know, threatening the destruction of the entire world. For sure, they they did a lot of crazy shit mm -hmm. to, you know, guarantee or to try Protect and guarantee. Their asses. Yeah. Of course they did yeah, a bunch of crazy shit. You know what I mean? Exactly. They, they, they dude, we, we actually spent money on psychics. To try to tell <laughs> to us the men who stare at goats. That's true. Yeah, we yeah, actually did. Yeah. we did experiments with psychedelics where we see if we could brainwash people. We did. Ex uh, we did all teleporting and everything. There was there was a uh, there was something called Operation Northwoods, which was signed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, which said that we were going to stage our own terrorist attack in Miami and blame it on the Cubans so that the U.S. public would support attacking Cuba mm -hmm. because of course we didn't want missiles to be in Cuba because it'd be close to the U.S. and all that stuff. So yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course, this, so that's why when I say conspiracy theories, sometimes I'm like, I don't know, man. Cause yeah, so, I don't know because yeah, there's definitely it, it's always like well, did, some kind did, of truth did, in there. Did you guys read the recent article in the New York Times about how um, high-ranking officials are saying that they definitely believe aliens have visited Earth, and there was some documents that showed as recent as 2004, you have these military, uh, uh, you know, like um, air pilots who encountered flying objects that were very close to their airplanes that flew at speeds and maneuvered in ways that just right. not possible with current technology. Hmm. And apparently they're saying that there's some hangar somewhere with uh, like some of these uh, metals and stuff that we found that we believe to be from UFOs. They're trying to study them and stuff. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I have one for you. I don't know, man. Like, have you heard what was his name Tom DeLong or whatever no. from Blink One Eighty Two talk about this kind of shit? No. It's like he goes he goes balls deep with this. Kind I of stuff. think for yeah. sure, if they found evidence that there were UFOs, they wouldn't tell us. Yeah, well, everybody would freak out. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, that's the thing. I I think most of it, most of it on you know on what we do see is definite like military testing i mean for like they love that these like conspiracy theories exist that's true like, aliens and you know covers their ass. like oh my god but yeah. they're really oh, it's just, probably a ufo yeah all this <laughs> money they're trying to put in for some awesome like space age weapon thing fucking death star thing they're building you know <laughs> yeah, that's more likely yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, who knows, dude? I don't fucking know. You know, like it's kind of fun to think there'd be aliens that exist, but I don't. You know, who the hell knows? <laughs> if they, you know, it's it's highly likely that if they did, that it wouldn't they wouldn't be organic. Yeah, they'd be robots. They'd be yeah. like that's post organic. Yeah, yeah, like at some point they reached it. Because how know, would they travel for that long and and not deteriorate? Or just they just they just evolved and now transferred their consciousness to uh, yeah. computers. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe the aliens that visit us are us in the future. We are aliens. Boom. I'm yeah. not even high, Adam. I knew that. <laughs> I'm totally sober right now. I think in our time we will see, and I, I think totally sooner are. than later, I think we'll see the collapse of the dollar. I think that'll happen Whoa. in our time. You've been hanging around my people too much, Adam. I do. Yeah. No, I just think I just think, like, new I think, world order. I think that we'll see that, and I think there's a lot of signs pointing that direction. And we talked a little bit about that with Jordan on his episode, with what we see some of these big companies doing with cryptocurrency, with the dollar where it's going, with the printing. What if the cryptocurrency was? It would be so easy for an agency like the CAA to create Bitcoin or whatever right. to track. 
to be able to track these un- these habits. underground purchases and shit yeah. online Ex- exclusively. Yeah, but if you and they don't want to blow their cover, you know what I'm saying? Right. So they're just observing. Well, do you do you know that the the way they were created were like the by cyberpunks? So these were hackers. That's th- the story. Yeah, that's the. You're right. That's the story. Nobody knows. Dude. I, yeah, but I I tend to subscribe to that story more than I subscribe to what you're saying <laughs> yeah. right now. That the government's under is beneath it all and is doing it. No, they've done uh, a lot. Or of it's just shit. one company. I think you're these like are. Apple I think Google these are a group fighting. of free market guys that really wanted to protect their their ability to purchase online. Do that is originally how it started, and then it evolved into something much bigger. And even crypto or no crypto, right? It still doesn't matter. It still points in the direction that that we're going that way. So maybe Bitcoin fails, and it is the, what you think, which I disagree. But let say it all is, and it all takes a shit. The tech, the blockchain technology is out there, and like, and enough people that understand yeah. it understand where it's going. It makes total sense that this will be the evolution of our money. Money always does seem to evolve, and it's going to, and it's only a matter of time. And the direction that we're taking it right now by printing more of it, it's only destroying it. Yeah, it took a hit, right? Didn't Bitcoin take a massive hit recently? Mm-hmm. Are they back up or what? Yeah, it's, well, it's not back up to it. It's not at its peak, but it's, you know. It's, it does, it's done that several times. Yeah, right? yeah, it's yeah. done that several times where, you know, it, that's the thing right now is uh, the thing that uh, everyone that I talk to says that cautions about it is that, you know, what we're seeing is all these, like, IPOs hit at one time and everyone's trying to figure out who's Google or Amazon and you just can't figure that out right now. And so we're getting manipulated too by some of these companies that are coming out with these cool videos. There's tons of shit floating around on YouTube now and like people are saying like, oh, this is the next one that's going to do this and do that. And so everyone's jumping on the bandwagon and there's obviously going to be some people out there that are going to you know they're going to use that to their advantage that we can get a bunch of quick money right now by making people believe that we're going to do this. So there's going to be charlatans out there also right now. So where crypto goes, I don't know, but I definitely believe in our lifetime that we'll see the either the elimination or the uh, destruction of the of the dollar. I don't think that. You think it's going to happen that soon? I do, I, and I think it's sooner. I do think it's sooner than later. That'll suck. You know that'll that'll cause massive massive issues. It could. Mm-hmm. It could. It oh, could. for sure. You t- you can you take away a, a country's money. And you've got uh, you've got chaos big time. Yeah, I, well, if you say it like that, yeah, it can. But I think if it's if it we evolve that way over time, which I think we're doing that right now, ain't nobody gonna let that shit evolve nicely. There's no way. You know how many, you know how much money there is in our, making our money. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. The, the, no, ain't no. They're not gonna. Yeah. They're the, not gonna be like the Federal oh, cool. Reserve is the biggest gangsters in in the country, arguably the world. That's why we're still you know running on oil. Yeah. I mean, it's the best. Who gets who gets to loan money and then also decide their interest rate? How fucking gangster is that? I'm gonna loan you fucking money and then I'm gonna decide how much you got to pay me back. It's my decision. <laughs> every, and then there's penalties if you don't. Dude, but nothing for every me. Dollar yeah. is, every yeah. dollar is every dollar is debt. Gangster is shit. Every yeah. dollar is debt. Yeah. yeah. How did that happen? What? Right. Do you guys know the story of the creation Federal of the Federal Reserve? Reserve? Yeah. Yeah. It's so it start. This started. It's as, a true story, by the way. This, I, you got Dollar you, started originally as paper receipts. It was paper receipts for for gold, gold and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it evolved to this point where no, the Federal Reserve Act was literally written on an island, Jekyll Island, by some of the most influential like guys in in America at the time, like uh, uh, what's his name, um, uh, J P Morgan, and like uh, anyway, these big they went over there and they had. Uh, they wouldn't even give the real names when they were on the trains because it had to be so secret. They went there, created this act, brought it back to Congress. Waited for a period of time. Uh, I can't. I can't remember when. When a lot of Congress would be out. I think it was a holiday, and they had their guys in there and voted in. It's pretty. Pretty crazy wow. story, bro. <laughs> the fuck. Look it up. This is. I'm not making this yeah. shit up. This is all true. So gangster. This is all true. And presidents have opposed uh, federal res- having a like a a Federal Reserve many many times, and the ones that oppose it tend to get assassinated. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I well, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds. I think it's all for the good, though. I really believe that we're heading in the right direction. That just sounds scary to say that, to say like, oh, the collapse of the dollar. It sounds like, oh, shit, we're going to die with it. But I think it'll be a, a slow transition. And I think what you're seeing with companies or seeing with like Bitcoin is that regardless if it's a worldwide adopted thing that ends up taking over the dollar, I do believe it'll be something that is accepted by certain companies. And we're already seeing that happening and talking in the news right now. Some companies like, well, listen, we'll take it. And if you're willing to put $1,000 of your dollars in there to get X amount of these digital coins that protect you from ever being found out that you're purchasing or doing something, like that, a lot of people see value in that. A lot of people I, see- I, I agree with you. Yeah. I just do not think it will be slow. I don't think it'll be peaceful. I think- 
You have countries like China that manipulate their currency like crazy. You have us and our Federal Reserve Bank. No way in hell are they going to not try to cause like it's it's going to be a big if the dollar does collapse it will literally be a collapse and it'll be a, ma- a massive problem actually i don't think any i don't think there's ever been a j- gradual slow evolution of currency i think it's always been no it's been boom a ma- no then, it's been a massive mm-hmm. fail right it's always been this they end up you know uh devaluing the money you buy oh, what, i forget there's like a the term. zimbabwe there's dollar. a term there's a term for it where they <laughs> yeah. like what we do we print money right that's when we're doing it. super yes it's it. like super inflation right it's like super like times normal inflation because we start printing and it's always that it's from that right we push really hard then it just drives down the drives down the dollar <laughs> fuck. that's a, we're doing that you know what i'm saying we're doing that as, as we exist and when you talk about the things that are happening with like when we talked with chris Cresser the other day and like guys like him are like, dude, we're going to go bankrupt from the healthcare. Well, if we're going to go bankrupt from the healthcare, we're going to go bankrupt over here. We're driving the dollar down. It's going like, to be a perfect storm of all this shit. I, yeah, once it's, it's all it's all happening. It's I, I feel like somebody's going to have to get a hold of it, and it might be start all over. You know, start all over. We've already proven that this fucking system doesn't work. Let's be honest. It's all based on which I, I used to love to ask people this. Like, if you're a man of faith, like, are you a man of faith? And you ask somebody who's like totally not religious about that. No, 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 I'm not. No, this and that. I'm like, well, sure you are. You use dollars, don't you? It's, it's fucking. You yeah. got, you, I believe you have yeah, that. Yeah, you, or, you got a lot that more. Value, yeah, sir. yeah, you got a lot more faith than you think you yeah, do. Yeah. You're handing over paper to give so get something from someone in return. Like that, uh, it's not backed by shit, dude. Truth. There ain't nothing that supports that. Oh, crazy. Right, it's a piece of fucking paper, man. Yeah. I like See? the Federal Reserve, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to get <laughs> shit happen. I like the IRS too. Yeah, we love them. There's, Check, your, there's your conspiracy theories for the day. That's it. Check it out. Go to YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. We post new videos all the time. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.